Okay, um, hello everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Tomek. I originally come from Poland, but I live in Denmark, in Copenhagen now. Um, we're at Unity. I'm part of the Toolsmith team. And our team is responsible for developing and maintaining test infrastructure that we use for testing Unity. But we have also side projects. And one of them is Unity Test Tools, which I will talk about today. Um, so before I'll jump into showing you how the tools work, I would like to say a few words about testing. So let's start with asking ourselves a simple question. Why would you want to automate tests in the first place? The ultimate goal of test automation is to find regressions and is to find them with the lowest possible cost. And you automate your test in order to delegate all the work to machines so it can be done much faster and uh, without, without uh, involving any humans. But besides that, when you have testable code, uh, besides that when you uh, automate your tests, there is a really nice side effect coming along. Uh, which is the testable code is usually considered better quality code. Such code will be fine-grained, it will be isolated, and it will be decoupled, which all works for uh, the quality of the code. Uh, for me personally, I like to see test automation as a way of uh, setting quality contract, a contract between you and the rest of your team, or maybe between your team and uh, other teams in your company, or even be between your company and the company you're shipping your code to, because there is no better way of proving that the code you wrote actually works as expected than running uh, a set of tests that prove it. So because we, have, uh, automated, because we automated the tests, we can run them more often now. And we would like to do it for yet another reason, which is money. Many empirical studies uh, show that the cost of introducing changes in your code raises really quickly in different stages of development. So you obviously want to do it as early as possible uh, in, in order to lower the costs. And fixing a bug in your code is, in most cases, uh, related to changing the code which may introduce regressions, and uh, you, don't want to, you don't want it to happen, of course. So, but we're talking about games here, right? So how is testing games different from testing other kinds of software? And my answer to that is that it's not very different. But let me elaborate on this a little bit. Games are definitely not a typical software. That would be a really naive thing to say that they are. I would rather say that games are a very sophisticated type of software that require nice graphics, good audio, but also they have uh, very strict non-functional requirements like performance or networking that needs to work flawlessly in order to provide the best uh, game experience. As an example, you can see algorithms that run your game. There are many of them in the game. And algorithms are perfect for testing. You just write unit tests for them uh, to verify they work as expected. And you can do that without actually testing them in the game. So there's yet another thing to remember when it goes about games. Games are very prone to changes. And every change can potentially introduce a regression. So you want to defend yourself from that by automating the tests and running them as often as possible in order to verify that your changes didn't break anything. Around four months ago, we released um, the Unity test tools. 
And we did that because we believed that there is a gap that exists in the industry, and a gap not only in the tools, but also in processes and patterns. And we believe we have something to share with you. That's why we will uh, evangelize a little bit uh, testability of your games by a series of blog posts and tutorials. Last but not least is that we would like to provide you a new way of submitting as bug reports, which instead of filling out repro steps um, in the bug reporter, as you did uh, so far, you would simply write a test that fails and submit it to us, which will make uh, it much easier for you and uh, to submit it and for us to reproduce it and then verify that it works after we fixed it. So in test automation, there's this concept of uh, automation pyramid. It shows, uh, I would say, a healthy distribution of different kinds of tests your project should have. Um, as you see on the bottom, the majority, part, the majority part of the pyramid is taken by unit tests, and they, uh, they are the ground base of it. Uh, and unit tests are those kinds of tests that are the fastest to run, uh, they are the easiest to debug, and uh, they are the, the most scalable solution. Also, they are the, the easiest to maintain. But on the other hand, on the other side of the pyramid, on the top, you have UI tests, which are also necessary, but they should be, uh, they should only take a little part of uh, your whole testing suit. Because such tests are, although they are the easiest to write, and they don't require the code to be testable, they are really slow, usually, they are hard to debug, and uh, hard to maintain. So in Unity test tools, we cover only those bottom two layers. Um, in the package, you will find a unit test runner, an assertion component that comes with assertion explorer, an integration test runner, and a platform runner for running integration tests on your platform you're developing for. So how does it map on the pyramid? I, I think it's not hard to imagine, but you can see the assertion component on the side because you can consider it as a semi-automation thing, but I'll get back to that later. So let me show you um, how to use Unity Test Tools. I'll start by showing you an example um, I made in order to prove that uh, it is possible to Okay, let me start with uh, saying that many people uh, asked us how to test mono behaviors because it's a really s um, unique class for Unity and it's impossible to mock it. That's why people found it hard to write tests for it. But I'll prove you that uh, it's possible and it's not hard at all. Uh, so this is the unit test runner. Uh, I'll uh, show it, I'll explain it to you a bit later after this example. So this example is a very simple one, a uh, simple controller where you walk with this character. It can shoot. In the top left corner, uh, you see the number of bullets that it has left. And once the bullets, once you run out of bullets, you need to reload. And it, you can also move it around. But the speed of movement depends on the health. So if the health is low, you will get to move much slower. So I'll show you now how to write few unit tests in order to test this behavior. This character 
It has uh, one simple mode of behavior that is called soldier controller. And it, uh, it's a very simple one. As you can see, it implements two interfaces, but I'll get back to that later. The only thing that this uh, controller does is that it pass input uh, to the motor. And the motor, the soldier motor class, is a class that does all the computation. So you delegate all the work to the soldier motor class. And this pattern is called the humble object pattern. So as an example, let's uh, go to the apply fire method. As you can see, it checks if there are any bullets left and it checks if uh, you are, let's say, allowed to fire because you can fire only in a s with a specific rate. In this case, it's every half of a second. Um, but of course, when we write tests, we don't want to be dependent on time. But uh, I'll get back to that later. And once the condition is true, we simply call fire from this interface. It's a really simple interface that is referenced here and uh, it's implemented back in the mono behavior as you can see here. So every time you press fire and all the conditions are valid, this method will be called. And the only thing it does, it only spawns the bullet and adds some force. This is, uh, this is not a really good example of the code, but uh, that wasn't my focus in this case. And you can see this uh, little part of code. Uh, we need it because Unity doesn't serialize interfaces, so we need to set it every time we, uh, every time we reload the code. So let me show you the tests I wrote for this class. A simple case, uh, we want to verify that fire, when you, the user uh, calls fire method, the motor will uh, properly propagate the call. So the first thing here is uh, we need to mock the gun controller and we mock it by uh, creating a mock of the interface. Uh, the next thing is that we instantiate the motor using the gun controller interface and we uh, override the can fire method in order to become undependent of time so we won't need to wait every half a second every time we fire a shot and we set the gun controller using the same uh, function as a method as here. So the next thing we do is we apply fire, which is, what, which is the same thing that is happening once the user presses a uh, fire button. And last, we verify that the fire, uh, fire method was called from the gun controller at least once. So let me find the example on the list here. It's this set of tests. When we run it, we can see they all pass. And uh, we know the, the motor works as expected without actually going to the game and uh, trying different cases, which is slow, and uh, we can, you can easily miss the corner cases. So let me show you how the runner works. Uh, the list here you see is a list of uh, unit tests that exist in your test project. And you can simply run them by pressing uh, run all button and they run almost instantly. Um, and you can see the results of each test in the details uh, dialog, details section. 
at the bottom. And the runner, it provides a few simple functionalities. One of them is simple filter that filters the name uh, based on, uh, filters the tests based on their name. But you can also filter them by the result. So maybe you don't want to see the tests that actually pass, only the, the one that failed. So you can do it from here. And there are also a few options. The first one will make the test run uh, whenever the code is recompiled. So when I introduce a simple and in this case irrele irrelevant change, the tests will run in the background and update the results here. Some people like to see unit tests uh, like some people define unit, say that unit tests should be fast, but how do you define fast? And one of the definitions is that they should be part of the compilation process, which makes them need to be really fast. So, because we implemented the test runner in the, in the editor, we are allowed to do more than we would uh, by running the tests from a different IDE, like Visual Studio. Some things require the editor environment. For example, if you want to instantiate game objects, which is in most cases probably not uh, a good thing to do, but sometimes you, uh, you need to do that, and it makes it possible to do it from this runner. Uh, and the runner has an undo system implemented that will clean up the scene from every game object you created uh, inside of the tests. Uh, but this undo system uh, has an overhead. And in case you want to avoid that overhead, you can tell the runner to run the tests on a new scene uh, so when we run them now, it will prompt us to save the scene. But as you saw for a second, it opened a new scene, run the test, and open the previous one back. And if you want to avoid uh, the saving prompt every time, you can tell the runner to auto-save the scene before each run. And the last option simply puts the details on the side if you prefer a different layout like that, for example. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, the assertion component. The assertion component is a very powerful and flexible way to set up assertions in your code. They're used to make sure that a certain state is valid uh, in a period of time. It's a visual tool, so people with uh, little programming skills can use it. And it doesn't require testable code. So let's see how it works. At this example, you can see two spheres. And those are instances of uh, the same prefab that is a simple sphere that has a physics material uh, attached that makes it bounce. Uh, it's the same instance of, the, of a sphere, but it bounces on two different uh, kinds of plane. One of the planes has physics material that allows the ball to bounce, uh, and the other one will, make, will clamp the bounciness, so it will make the ball to stop immediately once it touches it. So let's say we want to verify those two behaviors. I have attached an assertion component 
to both of them and set the assertion uh, to verify that the velocity of the ball in this case should never be equal to zero because it will the ball bounces constantly we don't want to, we can check if it will ever stop uh, if it will never stop on the other hand the other assertion checks if the velocity of uh, the ball will be equal to zero whenever a collision happens. So let's see what happens when you press play. As you can see, nothing, happen nothing is happening, which means that everything is working as we expected. But let's move the, the ball that should stop immediately once it touches the plane uh, to the other plane that makes the ball bounce. And the, as you can see, an exception was thrown because uh, the condition we set uh, failed. And that is a way to debug your code uh, with unexpected, when unexpected be behavior happen. You can set the error pause uh, button in the console that will pause the editor whenever an exception uh, is thrown from your code. So, because the code doesn't need to be testable, you can easily take your project and just throw the assertions on your code, press the play button, and just let it test itself. Once you have some rules set, they can apply throughout, through, throughout all the gameplay. And you, can, you will be notified by an exception when some of the rules is invalid, some of the invariants you set failed. So let's uh, try to set up a simple assertion. So I added the assertion to an empty game object. And the first thing you want to do is to select a comparer. And a comparer is a class that defines the way the values are compared with each other. Um, this is a list of default comparers we ship with the tools, but it's also very easy to write your own, um, your own custom compares. But let's say I want to test a float type value. The next thing is uh, to select a point of time when you want the comparison to happen. And let's say I want to check it in every update method. It will be checked basically every frame. The next thing is to select path to the property uh, you want to compare. And by default, this game object points to the game object you attach the components to. The list here is generated dynamically based on reflection and it will work also with your custom scripts. Let's try to add uh, a very simple script that contains one float field and one float property. When you click on this now, you can see it's available here and the float field and float property uh, are also visible. So let's select the float, uh, float field that we have in the script. The next two fields, they come directly from the comparer. Uh, they are exposed in a similar way as the fields in scripts are exposed. So you can use that in order to customize your comparer. Let's say we want to verify 
if the my float field that you can see here is equal with this precision and then you need to say what do you want to compare it with and you can either compare it to another game object as you can see here and then select a path to a field or property or you can compare it to a null value or a constant value so let's make a really simple assertion that verifies that this float field is equal to 3 in every frame. When we run it, nothing happens. But once we change the value of this, the game stops immediately. So in very few steps, we can set a way, we can set an assertion that will verify a certain state of the code uh, while the game is running. A lot of people asked um, if, if, they have, if they will put those assertions in their code and they will create a release uh, version of their game, will the code be stripped out? Recently we added a script that does that, so you, have, you don't have to be worried that this code will end up in your final build. Um, the assertion component, it has a nice uh, utility that is called Assertion Explorer that simply lists all of the, all of the assertions uh, from your current, in your current scene. So it's much easier to get an overview uh, and manage them. It allows uh, simple grouping uh, and as well as simple filtering. But I won't go into details of that one. So that was the Assertion Explorer. And the next thing is the Integration Test Runner. The Integration Tests are scene-based tests. You can, uh, you can see one scene as one test suite that contains multiple tests. Uh, they are used to test integration or interaction of your assets that use Unity API. So let me show you an example uh, that we created using the Angry Bots assets. The Angry Bots project wasn't developed with testability in mind. Uh, but nevertheless, we were able just to take the assets with slightly, slightly modifying them in order to reduce uh, the size and put them uh, on the scene and create integration tests that test some of the behavior. So here you can find three simple tests. One of them, le le let me run them and show you how it works. The first one, checks if the player gets damaged once the robot explodes and the remaining two verify uh, that the robot wakes up or doesn't uh, when the player is in or out of the visibility range. So as you saw, it runs really fast and it's really easy to create such tests. So let's try to actually do it. In order to create a test, uh, you want to open the integration test runner and uh, press the plus button. And an integration test is simply a game object that contains test component. And in the inspector, you can change the name of the test. You can change the platform you want to run the test on. You can set the timeout value. And also you can set the test to be ignored by the runner. There are also a few more remaining options, but I will get back to them a bit later. So let's see what happens when we run the test now. After one second, which is the value of the timeout, the test simply failed. 
And uh, that is because in order to make the test pass, you need to explicitly call a method from integration test class. And uh, it is designed the way, that way because it's really, uh, it's the boundaries of the test are not clear in the case of uh, integration test. Unlike in uh, unit tests, where the boundaries of a test are clearly defined by the scope of the method, uh, integration test additionally based on time. So what to do to make uh, a test pass? You basically need to call a method from the integration tests class, uh, either pass or fail. But uh, you don't need to write your scripts if you don't have a sophisticated case because we provide you a call testing component that will do it for you, uh, where you simply set which method to call and when to call it. And let's say we want to pass the test when in start event, when the start event is called. So when we run it here, it will pass instantly. But controlling the test using the script is not the only way we provide. Uh, you can also use the assertion component to steer the test flow. In the test component inspector, you have the option to set succeed on assertions, which will succeed the test once every assertion under uh, in this test is checked at least once. And obviously it doesn't fail. Uh, additionally, the next method uh, allows you to control the test uh, by exceptions. When you select the first option, you will tell the runner that you, ex you expect that this test will throw exceptions. You can specify a list of exceptions here to narrow the number of exceptions. And you can tell it to consider the test as successful once uh, any of those exceptions is thrown. The remaining test is a simple sphere that is falling on the cube that is calling pass on the trigger enter method. So let, let, let's run all of those tests. So once you have your tests automated, uh, you obviously would like to verify the behavior on the platform you are developing to. And we provide a utility in order to build and run your integration tests on uh, the platform of your choice. It's a very simple window that allows you to choose one or more uh, scenes and the uh, platform you want to build it to and then you just say build and run tests and it runs. By the end of uh, such run you will get a list of tests that failed so you can verify it for example on different on platforms like mobiles or consoles where you can read the results on this from the screen. So if you have a company or you work in a company, it's very likely that you have a continuous integration system running. You want to build your code 
maybe over the night in order to have it ready when you come to work in the morning. And if you have automated tests, you would obviously like to run that as well as a part of the nightly builds. And unity test tools provide you a way to run both unit tests and integration tests uh, from command line. Um, in case of integration tests, it is possible to do it for the editor and standalone, where you will get an XML uh, result file in an unit format. And uh, so you can pass the result to your continuous integration system to see the report. In case of other platforms where it's not uh, very easy to get files from, uh, it is not possible at the moment. However, we are working on a solution uh, in order to fix that problem. So Unity test tools were re are released uh, on the Asset Store. They are free. Uh, so if you haven't tried them yet, you, I encourage you to go to the Asset Store and download them and try it out yourself. There is a documentation file shipped with them, uh, unfortunately in English. Mm, so please do it. And that would be it from my side. So thank you very much for coming. and. Uh, you can ask questions uh, if you have any now. Uh, uh, I have a question. Like, does it include any way to measure the performance or the how long it takes to run each method or something like that? Mm, we don't have a framework for uh, measuring performance. Um, and we are not planning to release one at the moment. Uh, but I guess it will be possible to use the integration test runner to create uh, some performance tests if you uh, have such need. Um, I can explain you a bit more after the presentation if you'd like to. Any more questions? All right, thank you very much for coming.